Pivoting now to the Dallas Mavericks, we're going to talk a little bit of free agency, but not in the big fish kind of way. We are instead going to focus on what I believe are the common sense moves for Dallas. Now, what do I mean by common sense moves? The Mavericks have approximately $30 million in cap space to spend this summer. We've heard that they want to keep a lot of the team as is or around them. They've already expressed interest in giving Dwight Powell another three-year deal worth approximately $50 million, I want to say. That's a big number. They like Powell. I get it. I think he overall improved this season, although after the All-Star break, I think he was a little bit overexposed. I don't think he's an answer as a starter. So there's a little bit of give and take there for us to investigate and all that and discuss in the future. However... I don't think necessarily the best answer is to go out and get a Vucevic or someone like that. Now, I understand that you can't base a guy's entire career or even his entire season on just what happens in the playoffs. Against the Raptors, Vucevic has not been that special. That scared away a lot of people from getting him because, yeah, the idea is you would probably have to give him a at or near max contract to get him from Orlando. He's a 20-10 and all-star Not a lot of defensive prowess, not a lot of foot speed. Uh, It would give you a kind of super Euro team. I know there's people as well talking about Goran Dragic. Another thing to consider, though, in that regard, I know of his connection with Luka and everything and, you know, the whole Euro super team. But I also look at it in a somewhat more practical sense, I think. The Mavericks have already expressed that their, their entire mission is to get sensible guys to pair with Luka to build around this young core of Luka and Kristaps Porzingis. That does not equal a 32-year-old Goran Dragic. I just don't think it does. I think they would play well together, but Dragic isn't a great defender either, so that doesn't fit well with what they need. What they need are three-point shooters and defenders. So I've got three options for you here, two of which are... Very good defenders. I, I would say borderline stellar in some cases. Uh, another guy who's not known for his defense but can still give you a lift to kind of offset what you might lose offensively in one of these guys. Now, who am I talking about? Here are three guys you could get, I believe. At least two of these three you could get while spending at or maybe you make one more small roster adjustment to open up a little more cap space. Instead of blowing all your money on one guy, whether it be a Vucevic, whether it be a, you know, anything short of like a Kevin Durant or a Kawhi Leonard, neither of which I think are coming here. Uh, This is the kind of guy that you could get, but I don't think it makes you overall as good as you need to be to be a real legit team. These guys are as follows. Danny Green from Toronto. Now, Danny Green, you know him from his years with the Spurs probably better than you do, unless you really follow the league. You probably haven't seen a whole lot of Danny Green this year, and really even a little before that, because as I said, he's been in Toronto. Toronto's a good team. They just beat the Vucevic and his Magic in the first round in five games. That's cool, but it's one of those things where not only is he a good defender, he averaged 10.3 points per game this season, four rebounds, and 1.6 assists. Here's why I like him, though. Not only is he a very good defender, he shot 45.5% from the three this past season. Like, this season that we're literally... I know we're in the postseason of it now. I was trying to imply regular season. Just just go with me. He is a stellar three-point shooter, and he can defend very well. He is a great three and d pickup you don't have to break bank for him you're gonna have to pay but you're not gonna have to break bank for him would be a phenomenal addition alongside porzingis and luka Doncic. i have no issues with him at all i think he has the nba finals record for most three pointers made in the finals uh that was the spurs versus heat i believe the first time around when the heat won in seven games yeah yeah so You have that. That's cool. Uh, That would be a great addition to the team. But what's another need this team has? Another need is at point guard. Now, I'll be honest with you. I hate this next guy with a passion. And it's not just my Oklahoma City ties. I just notoriously do not like his attitude. And he's got a reputation as a bit of a dirty player. But sometimes the dirty player, if he's on your team, not 
not as unpopular anymore. I'm talking about Patrick Beverly. Now, Patrick Beverly, uh, point guard for the Clippers. He was with the Rockets before that. He was part of the Chris Paul trade. Very, very much an irritant, a gritty defender. Works his ass off. And yeah, he's going to play a little bit dirty at times. Play right against the edge of the rules. Maybe tiptoe across that line a time or two. You know, we know his run-ins with Russell Westbrook over the years. We know he knocked out Dennis Smith Jr.'s tooth earlier this season for us when we still had Dennis Smith. But he's a good guy. He's a good player. That's what I'm trying to say. Not necessarily a good guy. I don't know him personally, so I can't speak on that. But he is a good player to be able to add. This season with the Clippers, 7.6 points per game, 5 boards, 3.8 assists, 39.7% from 3. So not only is he an irritant, not only is he a good defender, he can still knock down the three, and he plays off ball, which means you get to keep the ball in Luka Doncic's hands. He's not going to make you break the bank for him, and he's still going to give you respectable numbers playing off the ball. Basically, eight points a game, five boards, and four assists. You give me that with everything else, I am totally on board. I will set aside my hate for Patrick Beverly if he becomes a Dallas Maverick. That would be another stellar signing, I think. And in that case, even just the pair right there, if you have Green and Beverly, yeah, that's not going to set the league on fire. It's not going to make people around the league and executives go like, oh, shit, here come the Mavericks. But it makes you so much better. If you have just those two guys, I'm going to say you're eight wins better than you were this year just off of those two being on the roster. That and Luka's continued progression in adding KP, you you get the idea. I think your team is much better. Hell, don't even factor in KP or Luka's development. Put them on our team this past year, this past season. Put them on our team, the rest of the situation exactly the same. I think that your team is seven or eight wins better with that pair. Finally, and you might have to make another move for this because he's going to opt out of his player option. I've talked about him before. We've got Julius Randle from New Orleans. Now, Julius Randle, he's a Dallas kid. He wants to play for the Mavericks. But last summer, they did not look at him. They did not really entertain the thought of him because he didn't fit the mold of what they wanted. He is not a good defender. He's an okay defender. He's a little bit of an undersized power forward. That also scares him off. He's only about 6'9". But he's a very complete offensive player. Part of why they didn't want him last summer was because they didn't feel he had enough range to his offensive game. He added that this year. In New Orleans, he averaged, playing alongside Anthony Davis, 21.4 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, 3.1 assists, shot 34.4% from the three-point line. Not going to blow you away with those numbers, but that's respectable. That's higher than Luka shot this year. And 52% from the field. Oh yeah, his true efficiency rating, 55.5%. The dude gets buckets. I have watched him for years dismantle the Dallas Mavericks. I watched him dismantle the Oklahoma City Thunder without Anthony Davis. And that was when the Thunder weren't in just complete freefall mode like they are now as they're down 3-1 in the playoffs to the Blazers without Nurkic. Not to pivot over there, but if you add Danny Green, phenomenal 3 and D player, not going to make you break bank, very solid addition. Patrick Beverly, solid, solid defender, irritant, good three-point percentage shooter, plays off ball, not going to break bank. You add Julius Randle, he's set to make $9 million this year. He has long outperformed that contract, and especially if Anthony Davis is on his way out in New Orleans, there's no way you're going to be able to keep Julius Randle there. I think he's going to move as well because, again, at the very least, even if he stays in New Orleans, he'll opt out of the deal because he's earned a better contract. He still hasn't ever gotten that first big payday, and I'm not saying you're going to have to give him a massive payday, but he signed for two years, $18 million with a player option in year two. He's going to get better than that this summer. And so maybe you got to make one more move to get him, but, man, if you're willing to give Dwight Powell $50 million for three years, you should be willing to give Julius Randle something to play for his hometown team, whom he wants to play with, to fit alongside Luka and KP. Now, the unideal part of that, of course, 
Uh, it's going to change up how you want to use KP. You want to use KP as his true position, a four, because even though he's seven foot three, he is not a great rebounder. The best rebounding year of his career was 7.6 boards. I still maintain that if you're seven foot three, you should not be averaging fewer. You're, you should not be averaging essentially the same amount of rebounds as you do inches in your height. So yeah, I'm not a, uh, well, I guess you can't say inches because now I sound like a dumbass for phrasing it that way. Whatever, you're 7'6", seven, 7'3". Seven, Damn it, now I'm completely thrown off. You're 7'3", you should not be averaging barely more rebounds than your height. That's all I'm trying to say there. Uh, so you got to get a true center. I would say a defensive center. Maybe like a Deadman would be a nice addition that won't make you break bank. He's not going to turn any heads. But hey, the guys on this list don't turn a lot of heads either. Maybe as Julius Randle will now at this point, I think he's garnered a little bit more attention now around the league. But it's still one of those things. If you can add two or three of these guys, you can give yourself a really solid, solid free agency grade and make your team a lot better. Now, was that a roster that's going to put you over the top? I don't know, but unless you can just strike gold upon gold and land one of the top two or three free agents this summer, I think this is a better route to go. It builds a much deeper, more complete team, and it gives you a chance. You know, we don't know yet if the Mavericks are going to get to keep their lottery pick. We got to wait until the 14th, May 14th. I believe that's a Tuesday. Uh, we'll know then, and if you get to keep your pick, let alone if it's a top three pick, ooh, you could add another really good player to this team. So hang tight. Let's see what it's going. But that's my case for what the Mavericks should do in free agency. I think a better better way to build your team, uh, getting more bang for buck, basically money balling the whole thing instead of looking at it from a perspective of let's just go get the one big free agent. Let's go get three, two to three guys if we can for that same amount of money, but all of which fill necessary needs on this roster. And when paired with a lot of this core you want to keep in place as is, you make something dangerous come playoffs.